Okay, so part A here, a uh, five kilogram object rests on an inclined plane that makes an angle of 26 degrees. Uh, the coefficient of kinetic is 0.35 and static is 0.52. What are the components of gravity? Parallel, so we want to find the force parallel. We want to find the force perpendicular. We want to find the force of kinetic friction. I'll, I'll call that force of friction, f force of friction kinetic, right? And then the force, the maximum static, right? I'll call it force of friction static, okay? So this is pretty easy to do. We don't, we don't really have to think about it. The gravity is acting straight down on this thing, right? Okay. And there's a component here and a component there, right? Okay. This side is mg sine theta, and this is our, our force parallel, right? This is our force perpendicular is here, right? That's going to be mg cos theta, okay? And then uh, we'll figure out the friction forces from that. That will become our normal force. So parallel force is mg sine theta, right? So it's 5 times 9.81 times the sine of 26. Now, let's bust that out. 5 times 9.81 times sine of 26. And I get 21.502. Okay, now with uh, two sig figs, I'd have to say 22 newtons, but I'm going to use this number so much that I've put it down here, and we'll just use the, the more exact value there. The perpendicular force is going to be the, the, since it's the adjacent side, these two angles here are congruent, right? So since it's the adjacent side is 5 times 9.81 times the cos of 26. So I'm going to go second entry, change the sign to a cos. And that's 44.0858, so 44.086. Okay, and then uh, I guess with two sig figs, we'd have to say just 44 newtons. Okay, but we would use this value to calculate the, the, the next values there. Okay, so now the force of friction kinetic, this is the force of gravity that's into the plane, right? So the, the normal force is, of course, the force, of course, Right? The normal force is going to be equal to that guy right there, right? So the force of friction kinetic is mu kinetic times the normal force, right? So that's going to be uh, our 0.35 times this guy, 44.086. Only I'm going to use on my calculator. I've stored that guy. Uh, okay, I've stored it to great precision, so times 0.35. I get 15.430. Now, again, with two sig figs, I'd have to say 15 newtons, right? And then uh, the static limit, okay? So, so the force of friction static is less than or equal to uh, 0.52 times this same thing, right? 44.086. So it should look familiar. So alpha B is where I've stored that number times 0.52. And I get 22.9246, so 22.925. Right, which would be about 23 newtons with two sig figs. I don't really care. It wouldn't make sense to round these things because these are almost never the answer to any clever question. Okay, uh, At the beginning, we just sort of ask you these things to make sure you're getting the right number. But you almost always want to carry a bunch of sig figs here or store them in a register in your calculator. Okay, Store these values. And that's why I've put them down here. Okay, Now, it does ask one question that's not just sort of a, you know, bust out the algorithmic uh, thing that we do always do, right? The one question is, would the block be able to remain at rest on the plane? Well, the force acting down the plane is this guy, 21.502, okay? So the parallel force down the plane would be trying to make it move, right? It's 21.502. The static limit is 22.925, okay? Well, the 21.502 is less than 22.925, and so the static force would just simply be up the plane equal to this, 21.502, because remember, this acts as a betting limit, right? It's like the force, if I exert one newton down the plane, this exerts one up the plane, right? Uh, two newtons down the plane, two up the plane. This thing, it's up to, it'll generate a force up to 22.925, 
21.502 is less than that, okay? So yes, it would because the, the force, the parallel force acting down the plane, 21.502, is less than 22.925. So yes. Okay? So there it is. We're going to use these numbers, and we're not going to go through all of this every time we have to solve a problem. We're going to use these numbers for all the rest of the whole note guide. Okay?